We saw in earlier chapters that you can use a list to group different data types together. For example, this data can be represented by this list. Since these are all different data types, it's fairly clear what each value in the list represents. But what about this data with someone's cholesterol test results and the corresponding list? In this case, all the numbers look alike. Without the text, we wouldn't know which one is which. One thing that objects do for us is allow us to group together values into a state and give names to the individual values. Functions that work with the data are called methods and they're packaged along with the object. We use the dot notation with objects to access the state and to call the methods. We've seen this dot notation with modules and with strings. We can read the dot as apostrophe s, call the math modules square root method with three as an argument, and call the word strings upper method. And we can read the dot notation the same way when we have objects of our own design. One other important thing to remember about objects is that they change our perspective. In non-object functions, like absolute value, the action takes the lead and we give it an actor to work with. When we deal with objects, the object takes the starring role and we tell it which action to perform. In the next videos, we'll find out how to define our own objects.